Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is August 1st, 2019, and what an amazing day today with the ups and downs. Miss Vegas is going to hand over our watch list. Okay, so we're going to talk about Telleria, PINs, FSLR, CLDR, and MYGN. So let's get cracking. So T-L-R-A, Telleria. You know, Telleria has earnings coming up August this they have been named the Marketing Technology Company of the Year at the Mumbrella Awards. This company, to me, is poised for a break. I wouldn't be shocked to see this over $10 in the near future. Um, you know, we've talked about the stock when it was in the 450s, $5. Look at how much the stock has grown over this time. This is currently an active swing trade. We alerted this today. I am seeing a lot of accumulation in the stock. And from a swing trade perspective, what I'm liking about Telleria is that it has a pocket pivot and new 52-week closing highs. Had that happen the other day, yesterday, basically the last couple days in a row, and it's poised for an expansion breakout, which is what we did see a bit of today. So I'm looking for a continuation of the stock uh, tomorrow and into Monday. I have a swing position in play. And I'm going to hold this one specifically into earnings. I don't have a large position, so I'm comfortable holding this. And I'm looking forward to hearing the results uh, of this stock. And especially I want to hear about their guidance. I think they're going to do very well in my personal opinion. So, Jim, let us hear about the Telleria chart. You put so much passion in this. It, it, I, it's, sure hard for me, it's hard for me to even match the passion well, that you have but i try let's go. but i try so this i'm gonna first i'm gonna pull up the year's chart and we can tell that we did have a double top with, we did have a double top here at eight nine eighteen and today we broke out of that nine eighteen and hit that nine thirty so we did have a pullback here into close right at eight ninety and this also beats the three year target so we did pass the three year breakout and that was here this year, I guess, and this has had a great run. It did have a resistance that it did have to break down here at 439. And ever since then, she just went ahead and ran all the way up. Then she created a little channel. And this little channel is what we have in the, it, they would call an ascending breakout. And once it hit that ascending breakout and that resistance level, it went ahead and broke out today. So we're going to pull this up to a 20 day, one hour. And I've got a support level right down here at between 825 and 834. Today was a beautiful breakout on this hour time frame on, on a 20 day. So we got an 825, 834, which was the top right back in here a couple weeks ago. And the second support channel is going to be right here at 845 to 856 with that first support to pull back at 872. If that 872 holds, It'll go ahead and run on up, and the resistance we got to break is going to be this 915. Bring it all the way up to 830. And that's going to be TLRA. And what a beautiful trade today. This really had a lot of power today with the way the market acted. And it and right now we've got what I would call a head and shoulders. And it should go ahead and continue on up and try to break that 930. If not, your low support, and I mean low, is 825 to 834. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be one of our favorite outlets, and that's called PINS. Okay, so this is known as the pins, because if you're a pinner, you would know where I'm going to talk to you guys about Pinterest. And uh, Pinterest, fantastic, fantastic results. The stock beat expectations. They raised their guidance. The stock surged more than 15%. Um, you know, the revenue was 261 million versus 236. That is just incredible. Uh, they expect to report revenue between 1.095 billion to 1.15 billion versus the estimate of 1.07. So, you know, one of the things that the CFO Todd Morgenfeld said is that the positive revenue was as a result of the diversity in the advertisers, which included small businesses, the entertainment industry and also the automotive industry. They also did say that the global monthly active users was up 30%, international users up 38%. 
uh, which is actually so amazing to see. Um, I think that Pinterest saw the growth in countries like the UK and guess what? Also in Canada. So the Canadians are loving Pinterest and I got to tell you, I love Pinterest. Um, the company is looking to actually expand in Europe and they actually opened up in six new markets earlier this year. They've also actually rolled out a number of new updates on their platform, such as shopping and wellness products. So if you're looking to also have personalized shopping picks and adding to your shopping catalog, they're going to launch a section called the Emotional Wellbeing Activities, which will help users combat stress and anxiety. So that's really interesting. They have so many great things. I mean, you can be on Pinterest and you can get lost in there. Um, you know, it's it's not just become just a site to post pictures. People would post, they would call them pin pictures. Now you click on the picture. If you like a product, you like what you see. If you actually click it, it actually takes you directly to the website. You can actually subscribe to something. You might actually want to buy something. So it's not just a pick site anymore. It's also a shopping site, but you know, people like the visual, they see it. And sometimes there's videos that show you the product and then you might actually be driven to buy it. So I think this is just an amazing, amazing success and growth story. And I think that we're going to see a lot more movement in the stock. Remember, it's a pretty new IPO. And so the market's really going to like this one. And I think we're going to see a nice uh, continuation on this particular stock. So Pinterest definitely soaring after hours. And Jim, let's hear about the Pinterest chart because again, it's a pretty new IPO. You're not going to have a lot of history on here. Yeah, and you you you, you like this uh, company too. We also oh, I follow, love it. If you follow our website, we do have a link right here with that P on there, and it'll take you straight to our Pinterest uh, page, and hit that follow button, and we sure would, would appreciate it. So we're going to take you right straight to the chart. We did have a little breakout here after hours, as you can see, with a high of $33. We closed at $28.30, and here for about, oh, I'd say here in the last 10 days or so, we've had a pretty good little run on this from a $25.30 area. So we're going to put that down as a low support. I don't think we'll see that. We're going to draw another support. First, let's look at the year. That's a minute. And we're going to see what we can break. We've got some new highs we can get to. We did have a 35.29 high up here when the IPO first broke out with a low right down here, right around the 23.05 20, area. And I'm going to draw me a trend line right here. Oh, I like that trend line right there at that 27.59. And I've got another one right here I'm really liking. That one takes a keen eye to draw these patterns out. We've got 28.82 with the next resistance up here right around the 29.44 and we are at 31.73 right now so we got another little breakout up here at 30.81 still got to keep going to get up here we got another high right here at 31.58 with a long resistance we got a wick we got to get to that's going to be at the 32.87 and this is a good way to follow how I draw these trend lines. And let me tell you what, they're pretty accurate. They're pretty accurate. And I can use them year in, year out for maybe a, a later date. So we're going to pull this up at a 20-day now and see if I missed anything on a 20-day. I did miss a trend line right here. I'm going to put that in pretty much. I'm going to lower it just a little bit right there, around 28.17. So we're going to bring this up to a daily now, one minute. Didn't miss a thing on that, did I? We do have a descending pattern right now. It's getting ready to squeeze at 21.73. So we've got three support levels that we got to hit. We got a low support at 29.44. Your second support is going to be right here at 30.83. And if we can hold this first support area at 31.58, that'll be fine with me. We had a high of 33 bucks. I got a 32.87 resistance that we need to break. We do have another one. I'm going to go ahead and draw another one right here at 32.02 and another one right here right around 32.45. So we've got a long resistance. We're going to look at this at yearly again. 
We have a long resistance high to get to at 35.21 and 34.23. And this 32.87 is going to be your long resistances. And we're going to pull this back up to a daily. There's your 33, your 32.45. Low first supports 31.58. 3083 and your low bottom line strong buy is going to be here at 2944 and really really had a real nice run right here and let's see if this can hold if not I'll chase them down to my moving averages which I use on a daily one minute and that'll be the 200 the 34 and the 9 EMA and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be bring on the sun solar power S F L S F FSLR. Oh my God, get it together. So, um, so first solar, you know, this company, you know, I want to say solar stocks have been hot and uh, quite impressive today in particular. And so first solar, if you want to take a look here, you know, obviously they're in the solar business, but they also have earnings coming up. And, uh, you know, taking a look at their chart, I mean, they have earnings, I think it was today after hours, so I have to see what they were doing. But uh, definitely pocket pivot on the chart, uh, definitely had a nice volume surge, 52 week highs. I mean, a beautiful chart. And you can see that today, look at right here, this huge green bar right after hours. And what happened here with FSLR? Let's take a look here. So they're in technology, semiconductor space, so let me just see here what they did here with the earnings because I was so focused on Pinterest because I love Pinterest so much. Um, but let's see here. First solar. What did they have here on their earnings? So they did have here their earnings. Let's see here, Jim. You want me to give it to uh, you? Well, I have it here. I just have all, I have all their slides, but I just want to see what the bottom, what is the bottom line here? So okay. they did maintain their guidance of their earnings per share and of 225 to 275 their uh 2000 year and net cash guidance from wow good money here 1.7 to 1.9 billion dollars so you know what this looks like a really good earnings winner here on fslr what is it trading at now jim after hours um 6705 Okay, so you know they had their net sales of five hundred and eighty-five million dollars, and I just can't believe it. Their cash and restricted cash of two point one billion and net cash of one point seven billion dollars. So they did announce their results. Um, they said that they had an increase of fifty-three million dollars from the prior quarter, and this is really due to the um, increased module and sales from the U.S. and Australia. So that's excellent. Um, they continue to have a um, positive capital investments in what they call a Series 6 manufacturing capacity. Uh, they said they're making significant progress there, um, and they have a lot of improvements across all their metrics. Say this CEO, Mark Widmar, he is doing a very good job with taking this company to the levels that they are doing. Him and his leadership team are doing very, very well. If I look at the guidance, um, the guidance actually uh, is unchanged. Uh, gross margins are pretty much this actually up by about half a percentage point. The the expensive they they've brought down the expenses, so it looks uh, in line here. And uh, earnings per share, net cash balance, and everything else is pretty much staying in line. So that looks pretty good here. So, you know what? I think uh, we should keep a watch on this one. I know some people had earnings calls in play. Uh, for this one and we'll see tomorrow how those calls do but Jim let's talk about that chart uh, not a bad uh, results here very good congrats to solar traders yep so we're going to pull up the year's chart we did kind of have a double top here on the year's chart you can tell I have no trend lines on it right now and we had to break a resistance of 6801 68 dollars Pullback support was right around here, right around 67.13, and right now we're at 66.80 after hours. So I've got another support right down here at 65.56, and I'm just kind of draw some trend lines in here. I've got another one right here at 66.11. So we're going to pull up the 20-day now. I know there will be some more I need to add to it. Not too bad. 
Got a low support right down here. You can see we've been in a channel here. It did dip down to 58 cents, and I think that, I believe that might be because of the loss it took. It took, oh, let me see here. It says here it took a loss of 18 cents a share. So we're going to bring it back to the chart. Sales still look good. It did have a little fat finger right down here to $58 and bounced right back up and kind of held right in between here in the middle of the pivot point of the channel. The resistance of that channel is right here at $68. So the resistance we do need to break is going to be down here at $68.84, $68.86. That's it. And pullback support at the bottom is going to be here at $64.42. Your second channel of support is going to be at $65.56 to $66.11. Your first resistance to break is going to be here at $67.13, $68, and $68.86 to bring it up to new highs. And we did have a high of $69.24 today. And that's a beautiful little run today on this trade. I do believe it can pull back to the $64 area, $64.42, anything below that. I'm going to assume it's going to be a strong buy. This is one you don't want to chase. Let the trade come to you. And that's going to be FSLR. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be CLDR. Yeah, so CLDR. So, you know, CLDR, as you guys know, this company is into cloud management, but they also are um, their application software company. They're very involved also in the artificial intelligence. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned before with some of these videos we've done, you know, artificial intelligence is life changing and we're going to see more and more and more about this. So definitely uh, Cloudera is involved in that space. So the news here that we're seeing here with Carl Icahn is that he did reveal that he has a stake in Cloudera. He also might be looking to take a seat on the board. Um, he actually said he could seek a seat on the board and he did say that the um, shares of Cloudera, CLDR, are undervalued and that he will look to hold talk with the management team to look at how they can increase shareholder value. So imagine that he's investing in the stock and he obviously feels it's undervalued. Um, the other thing too is that he took a 12.6% stake. So when I was actually taking a look here at what exactly are we talking about here with Carl Icahn stake here, I have looking here, so it looks like he's got a couple of his divisions buying shares and these were all bought uh, today. So like I said, 12% stake. Uh, we see here that um, he's bought uh, under the Icon Partners, 3.986 million and under the Icon Partners Master Fund, 2.838 million shares. So we do see here that uh, he's picking up all these shares of Cloudera. And you know what, what is this Cloudera price at? I mean, if you look at the price of the stock, what is it going for now? But I mean, it's an under $10 stock. We also have a gap fill. So don't be surprised to see that we're going to have a gap fill on the stock and take this over $8 in the coming sessions. And you know what? We could probably see this go back over 10. I mean, at one time, this stock was in the $16 range. Um, that was not even a year ago. So uh, last November. So there's room. I agree, it's probably undervalued, but there's probably had some stuff happening at the company that has caused this stock to pull back. Um, we could see that there hasn't really been a lot of buying going on, but we do see the month of July, we are starting to see volume coming into the stock and it's slowly, slowly, slowly picking up and getting stronger. And now, of course, with him in the picture, uh, Carl Icahn, uh, we are going to probably see more action in the stock and we can see that the long-term outlook of this particular stock is looking really good. I'm actually seeing also a pocket pivot on the chart. We're above the 50-day, also an expansion break. This is a good sign to start uh, taking a position in the stock if it's of interest to you. I like it as a swing trade. Could probably be day traded even tomorrow based on this excitement with Carl Icahn in the picture. But uh, let's hear, Jim, what your thoughts are on the chart. Just that word cloud is a big, big number right there. I mean, because cloud is a big deal. Carl did take 
6.62% in the company, and I heard it was way oversold on what I heard on TV just a little bit ago on CNBC. So we're going to pull up the yearly chart. We're going to take a real good look at this chart. On the yearly, we did have a high of $20.18. $20 she did kind of pull back a little bit to a support level, which I'm going to call a pivot point on the yearly chart at $10.04. So that's going to be our long target on this trade. We do have a gap fill, and we did break that gap container that's right down here at 597. The next target on this trade is going to be up here at 877, long. And I think this would be like a swing trade, but I'd want to get in at a good support level. To me, that support level is going to be right around 597. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. We're going to take a good look at the 20 day. We got a resistance up here at 713. 721 did have a nice little once that news came in after hours it did jump up pretty hard and built a resistance at 721 with a high of 780 so this is how we're going to call it we're going to call a low support there's another little channel of low support down here and we're going to put that at the 614 so we have the 597 to 614 area is going to be your low entry your low support your first support is going to be right here at 644. And let me pull this up. Just take a look at it here on the daily one minute. I might have missed something. Yeah, I kind of did. We're going to have a support right there. This is what needs to hold. I don't think that will hold, though. I think it will dip down to this 644. Once it hits that 644, it should bounce up. But we're going to also put a low support on this trade here at 597 to 614 your second support is going to be right here at 644 and then your first channel of support which you could call a pivot point it's going to be at 709 to 721 with a resistance to break at 737 bring it up to that 780 and then remember we're in a gap already right in here so that gap is going to take you up to ten dollars and four cents and that's going to be CLDR and I'm going to repeat this 597 to 614 is going to be your strong buy. Your first, second support idea is going to be right here around 636 to 644. With your first support, which is going to be the pivot point now at 709 to 721. To break resistance of 737 to 778 with a high of $10.04. And the next one and last one we're going to talk about is going to be a big runner today. And that was M Y G N. Well, you know what? This company here, M Y G N, this is Myriad Genetics Inc. And, you know, it's kind of like, what the hell does this company do? I mean, they're into services, research services, but, you know, they do so many things. But, I mean, they are a company, they're involved in, you know, uh, answering their missions to answer patient questions. They also focus in medical specialties. They're involved in um, dermatology, oncology, autoimmune system, neuroscience, urology, women's health. I mean, this company is out in Salt Lake City, Utah. They've been around since 1991. Um, you know, they have, um, you know, obviously the ticker is MYGN. They also have locations in Austin, Texas. They have in Germany. Um, they also have location in Switzerland, also in California. So they've got, you know, they're all over the place. If you go to their website, I got to tell you, it's a very busy website. I mean, they're just involved in just so many things. Um, but I want to just mention here, and also their president, Mark Capone, he used to actually work with Eli Lilly, and uh, he's got a very good background and um, it, at the company. So they've got a very strong uh, leadership team. But here's what I want to mention. So... I was wondering, like, what happened with the stock today? What was going on? So we did alert this call, and I want to thank my team at the Trade Exchange, uh, our partners. Um, they're just fantastic. I mean, they gave an alert on MYGN filing an 8K, and they had filed in the 8K that the United Healthcare issued positive coverage decision for the pharmacogenetic testing for the gene site psychotropic test. And this coverage is for patients that have a diagnosis of a major depressive disorder like anxiety, and they've maybe failed at least one prior medication to treat their condition. And the positive coverage decision 
is referenced apparently in the United Healthcare Network Bulletin. Um, so as a result of that information, I had alerted the trade because that seemed extremely positive. Like I said, the United Healthcare gave it a positive coverage decision for their pharmacogenetic testing. And as a result of, at the time, I had alerted the trade, uh, you know, Jim, you can actually show that and I'll actually locate the trade. Um, but that actual trade was at $37.12. So if you want to take a look, uh, it had a beautiful run. So Jim, let's hear about that run and let's see what's going on on MYGN. Yeah, I got a support level that I wrote in here that I was wanting it to pull back to, and that's going to be right here at the 4108. It seemed like it didn't want to come back to it. So I've got another support right here right around the 4244. And another one, this is a beautiful breakout today. I mean, this stock ran from 2892 right out of the gate all the way up to 4694. I can't do the math right now, but that's a, that looks like a $16, so eight. $18 run right there, definitely, somewhere in that vicinity. And this is the trade that Miss Vegas was talking about, right here, her option call, trade idea. She learned Yeah, we didn't do an option, but we did a, we did a, a actual day trade. day trade. And I alerted it this morning, you know, again, thanks to the trade exchange team giving me the information on the 8K. I looked at the week. see, here what I did. I saw the news, alerted the trade, but I also looked at the weekly chart. And the weekly chart also told me a story that this stock was definitely overbought. Earnings are not even due for a few more weeks. The stock had an expansion break, pocket pivot, volume surge. I mean, everything that looks on a weekly chart, this one had it. That's right. And she alerted at 37.12. So let's bring it back to the chart and see where that 37.12 was. Heck, that was right, right around in here. And you can see where it had that little top right there at 37.15. So she probably was alerted right around in this area right in right in here right in here and it did pull back a little bit run up against that 9 EMA and followed that 9 all the way crossing back and forth over that 34 and then here after hours or into close we had a 4694 with a pull back right here a close at $45 and right now it's at 4494 so I was looking at the bigger chart the bigger picture of this right now at the one year and you can tell this has been a kind of a choppy little up and down run with a high of $50.44 on the year. And we did hit a high on that. And I'll pull that back up here in a second. And it run right into this other channel right here that I had support at 46.44. And I was calling the next resistance out at 47.58. And I mean, you could, and it's going to be a choppy little ride right here. But I think the pullback, we did have. You know, my support level is going to be here at 4108. Now, you know, this is a huge, huge run. And it's kind of hard to tell you where I think it's going to pull back to. If I was going to call a support, I'd call it down here at the $35 area. If it decides to knife 10 bucks, that's going to be a very strong buy at 35 um, This other support channel right here is going to be right around 3750 with a low with your first support right here at 4108 and I do believe this can pull back I'd really do because it just had too big of a run I don't think it's going to keep on running and try to break that resistance of 54 so let's call the low support the strong buy at $35 your third support is going to be right here at 3750 your second support which I like right here for it to stop and hold right here at the $41 area and then your very first support is going to be right here at $42.48. We got to break a resistance as it comes back up to the $45 level and if we can break that you got the other five resistances that can move on up to that yearly high of $50.44. Again this thing was way oversold just about a month couple months ago it was down here at $27 today it closed at 4501 so this is and you know what i want to mention too that you know back on july 19 sorry jim we actually right. talked about we actually alerted this stock in the chat room as an actually day trade it wasn't even a swing trade and at the time the stock was like 28 dollars and 12 cents or 28 something 
And I just was shocked. Like I just didn't, you know, I took my eyes off the stock because it was a day trade back then. And, you know, was, you know, when you're in a day trade, you don't always go back and revisit. But I got to tell you, this is why it's good to have a watch list of stocks that you've traded that you did well on. Always try to revisit them. I mean, I'm just amazed at the move this has had in like less than 10 days, like incredible growth instantly. That huge volume surge, I would never have expected something like that to happen today based on the information from an 8K. That's just incredible. Yeah, and, and you know, congratulations on the team, but this is one that you want to keep on your watch list and just let the trade come to you. Don't chase it because you could get stuck and the pullback would come in and it'd be pretty harmful. So this is just one you want to keep on watch and try to develop your own little pattern and try to find your own support. My first one's going to be right down here, right around the 4108. That's where I think it can pull back to. But I've got a low support at 35 bucks, $35. And you can see where that double top breakout is right here. So I'm going to call that a strong spot to get in this trade. Give it some time to consolidate. It's very important that you do that. Now, also I want to make sure that everybody subscribes to our YouTube channel and rings that bell for future updates. This is the final stock we're going to talk about, and I think that's about it for what I want to say. And Oh yeah, I want to mention one more thing. Just kind of, the market was went for a tailspin today with Trump's tweets. We did have a rate cut. It did drop 25 points, but I want to just pull up this spy up here just for a daily today. You can see yesterday when the rate cut came in, people were thinking it was going to be positive for the market. But when them algorithms hit, it's a negative. And it did pull back to my low support that I had down here at 29.33. And then she went ahead and bounced up. And I was telling the room, I said, we're going to have a good day today. Because first thing, when I got to one of my job sites, I saw three black crows. And I expected that was going to be a good sign that we're going to have a good day. And the thing did bounce up. We did have a real nice day. And then all of a sudden, Trump started tweeting. And it just went nuts about the Chinese tariffs. And it just went ahead and broke on down to this 294 area. And right now we have a descending pattern going on. So I'm definitely going to be, first thing I'm going to be looking at is going to be this SPY. If it decides to go ahead and bounce back up again, I'm going to be buying me an option call on it. And if it decides to go down, I'm going to be buying me an option put. So I just wanted to bring the SPY up and tell you what a tweet can do. I mean... I'm bullish on the American economy, but I'm very bearish on the world economy. So you have to kind of hit the crossroads there. We did break down below that 25.33, and it went ahead and dip, dipped on down and tried to regain, and then she went back below that trend line again. So I got a low support of 293.96, and I'm going to pull this up on a one month. I'm going to pull this up on a yearly or a six month. Yeah, six months would be better. So this peak we had right in here, right at the 294 area, could be solid. But we were talking about it in the room, and we would not be surprised if it dipped on down to this 288 to 290 area and started to retrace. I have a solid support here at 290.73. So if I decide to go ahead and get a call or a put, I'd rather see one more red candle come down and hit that 290.73 with a low of 288.89 and that's going to be the spy and I just wanted to bring that up because I just like to show the reaction of what a tweet can do especially after a rate cut because it already you're thinking okay the economy's not and the GDP was down so you know it just kind of algorithms and it just pulled it on back and that's it Miss Vegas well you know what it was interesting market day today and you know what you just have to just sometimes Ignore the noise. I know, you know, it triggered a market reaction, so it's hard to ignore. But, you know, sometimes you just got to trade, like change your style of trading, like focus on other stocks that are not really related to China and, and uh, you know, just change gears. Like, you know, we had AMD. I know some people had AMD option calls. And as soon as that news came out with Trump's tweets, we're like, holy crap, let's switch gears and get some option puts. We grabbed the puts. And let me tell you, they went from 43 cents, which is forty three dollars one contract they went as high i saw them go as up to one oh one one oh two 
And I was like, holy crap, that's an amazing over 200% call in less than half an hour. It happened around 207. The call was made and boom. Uh, I mean, the option put was made. And then you know what? Uh, within 20 minutes, it just triggered a, a huge gains. Uh, so people were actually pleased because they it helped offset the losses on the calls that they had. So you know what? You got to just go with the flow and I guess just trade what's in front of you and let trades come to you like Jim was saying. So I agree with that. Yeah, and that's not the only one that dipped today. And if you have like your favorite stocks that you're watching and you're not in them and you hear something like that and you see the spy dip like that, go back and look at some of them big caps that you're used to playing. Now I told Miss Vegas, I said, we're down here at, at my support level at 29.10 and, and the stock dipped right down to that solid support line. And this is a strong support line for me between that 29 and that $34 mark. And it's been like that for the past couple of months ever since we hit that 34 high. And I, I've explained to the room many a times that I've had a channel and that I think we're going to stay in this channel probably until about Christmas time or at least later on till we get like a finalization of the politics that's going on in the debates and stuff. So I'm still thinking 34 is going to be a very hard resistance. I mean a real hard resistance to break. And that 29 is going to be a very strong point to get in this trade. And then it's up to you to figure out where the pivot point is. And the equilibrium in mine, mine's right around 31.48. That's right here on this third resistance line. That support, second resistance, third and fourth. That's going to be my pivot point, my equilibrium. And we did hit that today as it did a double top and then started to create a little descending pattern right in here. And she just, once that tweet came out, you can see what happened. The puts came in and it sold off. So Miss Vegas was top notch of being on this trade, knowing that she had the part of the team in it and they were able to offset their lot, their, their losing. They could have got out of that as it got up and then got in it as it started to come down. And that's AMD, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And we love stocks. Remember, subscribe and ring that bell to our channel. And Miss Vegas, do you want to say anything real short before I cut this off? No, just uh, no. I was just going to say honestly, like if you follow and subscribe to our social media, like either uh, Stock Twits or uh, Twitter feed. I got to tell you, I posted a lot of stuff today. I talked about um, stuff that we didn't mention in the video. I mean, I talked about Ruby on social media, and at the time that I did talk about it, the stock was $9.82. Now it went all the way to ten thirty. dollars um, I did talk about MYGN. Even when I talked about MYGN on social media, the stock was $40.67 and went all the way up to $44.94. At the, um, so, I mean, it does pay, uh, no pun intended, to actually just sometimes follow the social media, and I try to give as much detail as I can on why I like the stock and I tried to put the charts in there too. So it's just to give you ideas. That doesn't mean what I'm saying, take a trade, jump in, do your own due diligence, but I do post information, you know, to maybe see if you check it out, maybe you like it. So it, it can help you uh, to look at the social media postings and see if there's something that piques your interest. That's all. Yep. And then links are posted here on the right of the channel. Stock Twits, Pintergeist, Facebook, or YouTube channel. If you want to write us a note, you can hit that, and that'll bring it up there, and you can send us a note. Also, we have our chat room service in here, and we also have some trader tools that you could learn. Our websites can be very handy at times, for sure. Just hit that Twitter button, subscribe to that channel, and if you have a Twitter page or even Stock Twits. And this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is August the 1st, 2019, and we love stocks.